I'm Naomi. And I'm Stephanie. And this is the Espouse Trico podcast. We are an LYS, a local yarn store in Montreal, and um, we do this about once a month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sit down yeah. and talk about what we've been knitting and what's new in the store. So I think we were going to start today with my latest finished object. So I just dive in. We are seriously power clashing on the screen <laughs> as I watch us at the moment. I feel like <laughs> this whole sweater all is all about like intensity. <laughs> Um, so this is my warm-up sweater, which is a design of Naomi's, which is a free Espace Trico pattern. And it was really like supposed to be like your favorite sweatshirt. And that's exactly how this feels to me. So I made some modifications. I knit the size three and I knit it in Snef Nug, which is a really lofty uh, blown yarn that's really one of our favorites here at the shop. Yeah. So I used the sort color, which is black, along with um, Moondrake's plush Paka Paka which is a really beautiful um, alpaca and uh, merino, uh, I guess a brushed texture. texture. Yeah. yeah, and it has a little bit of a crimp in it as well. It's just amazing. It's like knitting with a cloud. It's a core of merino and looking really closely at it, you can see, yeah, almost like a boucle texture. It's not spun like a boucle um, technically, but it has, yeah, a crimp, sort of like those hair ones in the yeah. 90s. Yeah. Like that's what we mean by a crimp and it just has a beautiful texture to it when yeah. you up. Yeah, and it's very fuzzy, much like the snuff thing. So I thought that these were a nice pair and I decided to do sort of a rugby style stripe. So these are 20 row stripes. Um, in the back neck, I obviously kept working my short rows in the black. And then once I had 20 rows at the front, that's when I started doing my stripes all the way down. So I did modify the length a little bit. Uh, Naomi's original is quite cropped. It probably would have ended more like here but I wanted a nice balance of my stripes. So I kept going and my bottom rib is also in the uh, hot pink. And uh, I love it and I wear it constantly. It's really exactly what it's supposed to be. It's like this super comfortable sweatshirt vibe, but I obviously went for this super bold stripe. I was inspired a little bit by the Le Bandana that we knit in the summer by Amy Gilles. Um, knitting those big chunky stripes made me feel like, yeah, that's what I want. Um, and yeah, I'm going to wear it to go see Barbie on Tuesday. Fantastic. Yeah, it, it would be, we were talking about this when you showed it as a whip last time. It yeah. is definitely a Barbenheimer sweater. But... Yeah. And I mean, I think it'll outlive the Barbenheimer height. Definitely. I'm already definitely. sort of forgetting about the in the Heimer part of it. And it just feels right. very, very of the moment. Yeah, definitely. It's sort of fun and like, look at me. Yeah. Um, so of course, typical, I don't, we don't have any more of this color in stock right now because I used it all for this sweater. But uh, I thought we would show you a couple other options. This is the electric lilac, which is very much in the tonal range with Steph's electric berry here. But I think it would be super fun to use one of the variegated ones that we have. Um, this is ultraviolet unicorn, unicorn. We also have baby unicorn. And this is just really fun, big patches of color that I think would work very well in this kind of stripe, like nice and wide and changing circumferences. So you're avoiding the risk yeah, of pooling. pooling too much. And then- That was your idea for a pairing with it, which I, I love. I thought this could be really good together. Totally. Just, really different vibe. I really grabbed it. I think we were almost all, already recording when I was like, wait, we need yarn for this yeah. to show. And I just sort of grabbed this at, uh, on a whim, but I think that's kind of sometimes how you want to go with, with your color picking instinct. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to write up my project notes and put them on Ravelry. And then also we are going to follow up on our last time promise of putting yes. together like sort of a stripes expansion pack for the warm up sweater. So that's going to be on my list for over the next couple of weeks to pull that together with yardage um, sort of evaluations of how much you'll need of each color. Cause I was surprised I had to get into a third ball of this mm. just a little bit. That's good to know, especially since it's common to want to add length. I have a very short torso and I like wearing cropped things anyway. Uh, you may have noticed with some of my designs, this one included that I'm about to talk about, which I'm about to talk. Um, and so it is not uncommon for people to want to add at least a couple inches. Yeah. Um, so that's really useful. And the other version we did that we're talking about, if you didn't catch the last episode, is we have a version with sort of marinière, like sailor stripes um, in cream, black and red. Um, Which is and, not here because I borrowed it because I, I love that oh, one yeah, and too and I wear it all the time. I found the sample tag for it. You took mm -hmm. it home? Yeah. Okay. We were yeah. Confused I wore it home the other day. It, was, <laughs> it, got, it started out warm in the day and then it was yeah. cold and so I wore it home. Uh, but that's so just can... as a guideline for, for modifying with stripes is one of the easiest mods you can do. Um, but certainly yardage is often the question. Yeah. yeah how much will I need? Like... And, um, you know, we should, we could just put our heads down and do some math and we should be able to get at least close to a yardage. Yeah. 
um, guideline for you. Yeah. And you know, it's nice information to share, not just buried in a Ravelry, Ravelry page, but like a downloadable yeah. PDF you can take to the yarn store. You're making me want to knit another warm-up sweater. I think it's Do about it. time. It was, it's I know super exactly fun. what I want to use. I want to use Lopi. Oh, yeah, Let Lopi. We're getting so distracted. Anyway, we're going to talk about Lopi <laughs> too later. So anyway, that's my finished object. Very, very happy with it. And now... It's so you. It is super me. I even have shoes that have like matching laces. Um, anyway, uh, I think what we should do now before we move on to your finished object is do a snap and I'll change. And then yes. we're like off to the races. Are we good with that? We're ready. Okay. <gasps> you changed. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like that actually. You've changed. <laughs> I, I feel like changed. we've made that joke before. Have we? Like basically every time we click, I Amazing. Do that. And then that can be our classic joke. Um, well, I haven't changed because I was already so happy in my most recent finished object, which is a DK version of the Macaron cardigan that we talked about last time. Why a DK weight version, you ask? Well, why not? But also because we have a new yarn and you may have seen it on Instagram. We've been all about it lately. It is called Jolly DK. So it's part of our Bon Tricot line. All of our yarn names come from synonyms for happiness because that's what knitting and yarn is to us. So all of our Bon Tricot palette colors are on this two ply custom spun blend spun for us in the uk and it is a mix of bfl fibers and gotland fibers bfl is blue faced leicester gotland is a swedish long wool sheep and gotland is just very slightly gray oh no it's really quite gray as a fiber mm. usually and when mixed and blended with the bfl it creates a very slightly gray fiber uh that or fiber blend that becomes one of the plies in this yarn. So it is a two ply yarn. One of the plies is creamy white and the other is a cold sort of creamy gray. And that results in a really subtle marl that's more evident on the undyed base, but comes through really nicely on the dyed colors because it gives such a, a depth and dimension. So here you can see it on a quite a light shade. This is our chiffon pink color, which is kind of a colder pink. And you can really, quite, you can see the, the marl quite well in this but uh, the maraschino color, which is what Naomi is wearing, it's there, but it is quite subtle. So it really can knit up as more of almost a heather, mm -hmm. um, which is exactly what I was hoping it would do. So, I mean, we are so, so happy with the results here. This came out. This, you can see what we mean when it's knit up. It just has this extra sort of dimension and depth, both from the hand dyeing process, but also from the fiber blend at the beginning, then I mean this isn't just coming across as like a really bright fire engine red that I might almost be uh, wary of, of going for, a little too bright for me. It just has this sort of elegance and maturity to the, to the colors to keep them from being too garish and primary, um, which such a bright palette can sometimes come across as, as somebody who sometimes mostly avoids really bright colors. Really bright colors. All that to say, at the same time, I love how strong and clear these colors come out on on the base. Like they're by no means muted by the by the gray. By tint. the gray, there's yeah. enough of that yeah. um, of of the BFL in it that mm -hmm. you're not it's you're not reading the whole thing as an overtint of a gray. Mm -hmm. It's just giving this subtlety. And what I think about a little bit is yarns I love, like Jameson of Shetland, like Spindrift or Brooklyn Tweed Loft and Shelter, mm -hmm. where that heathered Thing is spun into it you can't I didn't think we'd be able to get that effect on a hand dye but I think by combining this base that the quality of this base with hand dyeing we've arrived at something that gives me those vibes like a, a fiber dye yeah yeah, yeah. Fiber -dyed like this, yarn. It's, it's just it's it's everything I want in a color work yarn yes. um and it just makes me so happy that we achieved it it's yeah. incredible I'm so happy and proud of the results. The spin is absolutely beautiful. The undyed shade, if I had a desert island yarn, it would really just be that. Steph is wearing the undyed shade sweatshirt in what is basically going to be my sweatshirt this winter, if I'm allowed to take it out in store. <laughs> this is the Seaway Pullover by Ozetta. Love all of Ozetta's designs. I had not knitted, I've had a few in my library, but I actually haven't knitted one of those Edda's designs until this one. And I am completely at fault for thinking they're simple. They are 
yeah. brilliantly intricate in a way that's really that's not challenging to knit you want to follow the pattern obviously it's not difficult to knit it is just intricately um designed in these clever little ways like the seam okay. of this shoulder is offset towards the back so that it falls really nicely to the front and gives you ease in the back across the back the shoulders the neckline is just i knitted exactly to the length stated and it just is that perfect in between crew neck and mock neck um the, i really love the coverage of the neckline yeah the tubular bind off instructions were really great Although I didn't bother doing a tubular bind off at the hem, but just patient. the detail um, on yeah, that cuff. Like, look at the beautiful work that Naomi did on this. And there's this gorgeous sort of texture in in here, all through it. Uh, it's just gorgeous. It's so nice to wear. I I gave you the co the highest compliment <laughs> when I first saw it. I said, oh, it looks like you bought it. Yes. <laughs> We don't all yeah. honestly think that's the highest goal, but we definitely have some customers who do. <laughs> yeah. And I get what it means. What it means yeah. to me is that it's been very finely finished. Yes. But also the, the, the shaping and the detail, it's not just four squares uh, seamed together. It's even though it's a drop shoulder, it has really clever, well-proportioned shaping details. So I highly recommend this pattern and I'm excited to try more of hers. Definitely the Miles shirt jacket I have in mind for this held double because I've swatched Jolly held double at about 15, four, it'll be beautiful 14 to 16 stitches. I got 15 stitches with it doubled on a, I don't know, five millimeter, something like that, but I knit quite loosely. And it was just, oh, it was good. Dense and squishy and you couldn't, it blended together without really being able to tell that it was two strands. Really, really. Yeah. I think there's lots luxurious. of advantages to what this, this composition that we created, you know, it just, it would blend so beautifully into, mm -hmm. um, into being held double that Marl is also going to kind of hide that a little bit. It won't be too obvious. It will feel like it was four strands uh, yeah. at an Aaron weight. Yeah. So obviously we are just, we're so excited to launch this one and, um, we should make, uh, should we talk about this a little bit in terms of the yardage for your mackerel? If um, someone else wants to do a substitution? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we generally say when people want to substitute yarns, uh, DK weight yarn for a fingering or other way around, fingering and mohair held together was the original pattern and the yardage for that is in the pattern. Um, but if you want to knit it with a DK, um, we generally recommend going with the higher yardage of one of those two yarns and that can apply across the board. So I knit this um, and the yardage was consistent with just a little bit less than the uh, fingering weight yardage required for the pattern, if that makes sense. Which also makes sense because we always build a buffer of yardage into our patterns to make sure you have enough and for differences in gauge and everything. All that to say, if you look at the fingering weight yardage for your size in the macaron cardigan, go with that for the DK that you're getting. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And it is funny how, like, the if you hold mohair and fingering together, they won't necessarily take up at the same mm -mm. amount. And it's usually that the fingering weight or whatever the, the other yarn is usually the one you take up more of, mm -hmm. but not always. Um, so it's always worth making sure when you're looking at a pattern like that, that you consider both. But yes, if you're going to substitute, choose the one that's more, be safe, don't mm -hmm. run out of yarn. Yeah. And with this being 50 gram skeins, we've had a few people asking if we'll have 100 gram skeins. Uh, we do currently in the natural sweatshirt shade, um, which is great for this. At the moment, we're planning to stick with them on 50 grams because we do find it so convenient for color work and for getting the sweater quantity that you need. You know, maybe you need 350 grams for your sweater. Perfect. You don't yeah, need to buy you don't need another... 400 grams. So that can really help with your stash and leftover management. And I'm also finding that it dyes really quite reliably in 50 gram skeins. non wash yarns can be a little tricky for getting consistency in colors. Some of these are definitely more variegated than others, as you'll see from the photos. Notably, this beauty, Concord Grape. This gorgeous, deep, warm purple has a lot more variegation in it than something like... Well, even the iris, Iris which is... is pretty regular. Pink garnet can be a little more variegated, uh, as can rosewood. Maraschino, I'm finding, is just deliciously solid. This is like... It's like the Chiao Gu color. It's, yes. I'm looking at the screen now and like mm. the little timer and the record button on my phone are like this Perfectly. exact red. Yeah. <laughs> So speaking of color work, should I get yeah. out some of our other designs here? So 
again you may have seen these as we launched them on Friday last Friday and over the weekend um, we Steph and I both uh, went to work immediately on some color work play and that turned into a couple of new designs and then we also gave some skeins to our colleague and teacher and designer extraordinaire Jocelyn Maverick and um, she came up with something absolutely beautiful as well. So do you want to start with that since sure. you're holding it? Okay, so this is um, the Expo 67 cowl. This is by Jocelyn Maverick. And so she was inspired by the uh, geometric architecture of Expo 67. And she created this gorgeous texture and color play where um, two colors are being held. The cable work is only in the main color, which is sweatshirt. And then she's using stripes of um, honey mustard, robin's egg blue, and peacock in the background, but you could really use anything. And in fact, the way the pattern's written, you could easily keep it one color as your contrast or use as many as you want. Or a color changing yarn. Yeah, would could be, be really beautiful. Well, we, I have an example of that. Yeah. So, so a really classic cowl shape that's actually gonna keep you warm in the winter. I like to wear these like in the back up over my hat, like the bottom of my hat, so there's no gust of wind <laughs> hitting the back of my head. Um, so I like this kind of shape of cowl a lot. I know some people like them, them bigger and do double, but yeah. it'd be easy to do by just changing yeah. your cast on. And if you wanted it to be um, a little less high, you could also you skip, a repeat. skip a repeat. I like it this way because it kind of also just looks like you've got a decorative neck on your sweater. I know, this is kind of great. Yeah. Actually, I love it. Yeah. Um, so this is, I wouldn't say that it's super hard, but I would say that it's a challenging pattern because of the fact that you're going to be managing cabling and colors at the same time and it is charted and it's a chart that moves you know to the side where the beginning of your right, round the shift the beginning of round marker is shifting but of course it's all clearly indicated yeah, it's, in the pattern and uh i think you know yeah, oh. it's one of those things once you've done one repeat it's all totally clear what yeah, you're gonna absolutely. do absolutely and the effect is it's a small project so you know if you're finding it takes longer than just knitting in stock net of course it does but you're uh but it's a smaller project so yeah. overall it's not a huge time commitment to produce something absolutely like the the impact is just beyond yeah the, the effort and of course it. yeah knowing jocelyn she is of course working on a yoke sweater now with this so i think it's a raglan it's a raglan she's using a yeah. raglan well, shaping you can see i think basically the raglan shaping is built into yeah the the slants but i the, can't even imagine the math the grading yeah and the, yeah yes. trying to figure it out um so you can find this pattern for free on Ravelry. We also have kits available on our shop. And if you don't want to use these colors, but you want our advice, just let us know. Oh, when I was photographing this yarn, I just, they kept falling into three color combinations and I kept photographing um, mm -hmm. them together. You can basically grab any three and they're going to look fantastic together, so. And then Naomi and I both were inspired to do some color work. So you go first, I think. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, this is the Daybreak hat. And the name is totally inspired by the nightfall mittens that Steph is about to show. Um, this is, you know what I, you know where I went? I went to your folly skirt and I grabbed I the, the motifs because I'm like, this needs to be a hat. The folly skirt is full of these absolutely fantastic traditional color work motifs and they just translate really well to a hat. So I went with a similar um, idea of, of these slightly these subtle differences in color that kind of provide that like melting fair isle mm -hmm. look so this it. is pink garnet and brick which is surprisingly close when you hold them right side by side um and then with fern and honey mustard and of course i didn't use all of them for the hat i would have had plenty left for at least one more hat oh because there was sweatshirt in there too yeah for the, for the brim. So plenty of yarn here, um, 250 grams for a number of hats of all sorts. If you just had leftovers at the end, you could stripe them. So, yeah, you know, do all kinds of one or two kits it. could get your Christmas knitting done. There you go. And then, so my um, contribution was the Nightfall Mittens, which I'm just basically leaving on this cute little hand because <laughs> I'm wearing big rings. I, can, um, I have no rings I can here, show you now. Here. And it would match my cardigan. Okay. Because the maraschino color is in these two. So also, I was I went back to the folly skirt too and looked at some of the uh, motifs that were in it and adapted them to be uh, for this mitten. And it I used the Oxford blue as my main color because uh, it's one of my favorites. And then I've got maraschino, pink garnet, conquer grape, and honey mustard in the mix. 
just like very me. I love purples and yellows and the way that they play against each other as contrast colors. It's so you, you are currently in your like 80s Ralph Lauren era. Up the time. <laughs> this is so consistent. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is one of my favorite ways to make mittens, which is that it has what's called an afterthought thumb. So I left one of them actually unfinished so that I could film a little video, uh, which I haven't gotten to yet, but I'll show you how that's, I'm just gonna. So you can see there's a little line here of knitting that's waist yarn, that's for the thumb. So what you do there is um, when you come to those stitches in the chart, and these are obviously very much charted because that, how else you would explain it. Um, you knit those stitches once with waist yarn and then you slip them back and then knit them again with your main yarn. So that yeah. when it's time to do your thumb, you unpick those stitches and you have live stitches on both the top and the bottom. And you just pick up a little stitch on each side and that gives you your stitches for your thumb. And just for the sake of keeping these ones a little simpler, I just did a, a solid color thumb in the main color. You can also add color work to your thumb. It's really like, do Sky's anything. the limit. Um, so yeah, I think these are super fun and I'll be probably stealing them from the store to wear a little bit come the holidays. It's just yeah. a great, it's great yarn for this kind of yeah. stuff because this is, um, these are knit at 25 and the this hat's at 24. 24, yeah. So it's really dense. Like these will keep the wind out mm -hmm. at the stranding in the back also keeps them really yeah. warm. Meanwhile, these, this is at 21 and this is at 20, although I think my gauge might've slipped to 21 in that. And uh, at the moment, Hannah, uh, one of our great staffers, is knitting our Glee shawl pattern in Jolly at 16 stitches in garter stitch. And so we've really run the gamut of, of what gauges you can do with and it. what you can do with it here. And we're finding it extremely versatile. And that's even before you get to holding it double or holding it with more hair. But th the other thing I wanted, I don't know if you um, had thought to mention this, but a design detail that I really appreciated with this is that you don't change the needle size from the ribbing to the body of the glove, there are increases instead. And so that just really helps with minimizing the number of needles and fuss, especially on small circumference. Um, so I really liked that you thought of that. Yeah, it's cause I'm lazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think ages ago I designed my kind of classic DK mitten block right. with only the needles I needed with me. And I was like, oh yeah. no, I forgot <laughs> ribbing needles. And so that's right. You, you start with 40 stitches for the cuff. You do a nice big mm. increase to 56 for when you're also, your gauge is gonna change to uh, your color work gauge. Yeah. So you don't have to have any other needles with you mm -hmm. when you're making these. So all three of these patterns you can find on Ravelry. Yeah. All three of them you can find as kits on our website and any kind of color changes you're interested in making, we love to consult on such things. Absolutely. Um, so I wanted to have fun using the Jolly uh, with a different yarn as well. So this is with our Feederbrook uh, Entropy DK, which is also a BFL based two ply yarn so they play incredibly well together it's like but basically it. it's it just occurred to me as soon as we got like our first couple of dyed skeins that uh, Naomi brought to the shop for us to look at how well they would go together so I did the alpine bloom hat by Caitlin Hunter uh, I did size two exactly as written um, and I used the colorway spectrum in uh, entropy DK uh, that's okay I mean do we, we have it uh, we Is do this it this is it. That's it. It's just, you it's know, so every different skein. different and so beautiful every time. Yeah. And it, this is about a third of a skein, maybe a fourth of a skein. So, you know, the other half of it may have looked completely different. Mm, true. But I paired it with dark olive, although I did debate putting it with conquer grape, I think, as well. So, you know, these long color change yarns have a lot of um, ways to play. You've got so many options there. You always want to pick a color that, that goes but isn't super present if it goes too much you'll actually get portions where it'll meld together which always is going to happen with any color changing yarn because of how much it changes um there are, i used the feeder brook in my trove sweater yeah. by emma duchene there were parts where i actually cut out some sections because they were a little too close so actually i was one of the things i was going to mention about this pattern um it's, it's a really great candidate for low contrast color work mm. um when i'm looking for something where i think i'm going to get away with that i'm looking for large chunks of color work, right? So these large leaves, these petals on the flowers are big enough that it's gonna read, mm -hmm. even though it's um, a fairly low contrast. Like if you look at this section here, it got really close, but you can still read the pattern mm -hmm. because it's a large format right. pattern. So if you're considering um, looking for something to do uh, that low contrast color work, which is so beautiful, it reminds me of sort of like faded rugs and I don't know, there's something really yeah. sort of, dusty and Jane Austen-y about it. <laughs> um, that's what I would look for is a chart where you're seeing 
quite large sections of the same color together, yeah. not little one-off stitches or very fine work. That's when you'll lose all that hard work you're doing. Yeah, that's a good tip. That reminds me of the other pattern we have behind us that yes. uses Peterbrook. The pressed flowers shawl used <clears throat> um, Flashpoint. And this, between Flashpoint and Spectrum, these two patterns both are a great example of how colors that look so wild and maybe too wild for us in the scheme, when they're put in these kinds of, of large scale color work, or in this case, mosaic and slip stitch patterning with a more muted uh, background contrast, color, yeah. contrast color, you can really change how the, the, the brightness reads. Um, so this is a color Flashpoint. You just have the one little skein left, which I don't know is enough to do. That's because somebody walked kits. in and saw this and yeah, walked out <laughs> again with it. So it's like all the yarn disappeared already. That's it. So this, again, there are some sections where the color is a little bit closer, but overall it just reads really beautifully at this larger scale. So this is a pressed flowers shawl by Savory Knitting, Amy Christophers. Three years old, this pattern is already. I know. And there's a whole library of beautiful other ones I want to try now in it because it's going to go so well with Jolly. Yeah. Um, so she's a cardigan, yes. a pullover, socks, now socks to this summer release, and a, and a cowl. So um, really whatever kind of project you're into knitting, whether, whether it be smaller scale or garments or shawls or whatever, there's, um, there's a reason this has stuck around and become so popular and it's still so enduring as a pattern. Um, this was knit for us by one of our sample knitters, but it definitely, with this reinvigorated yarn selection, I yeah. am really interested in the pullover because you know me, I just knit pullovers. <laughs> uh, so this one in particular, this uh, sample, we used five balls of the San Garn Alpaca and two skeins of the Feeder Brook. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for something similar, that's about what, 250 grams of the Alpaca, which is, it will DK. So you'd be looking at five of these as your contrast. Yes. And two for of the, the Feeder Brook. Yeah. yeah. How good would this be? Yeah. Maybe that's going to be my That'd sweater. Be very pretty. I think I could finish it in time. I will not finish that in time. For Rhinebeck? I don't think Maybe. I'll finish it in time. Well, I have. Depends. Are we, are we moving on a pace? We... I guess. Um, do you, you know what? Let's, since we moved off into the feeder brook, we yeah. may as well keep going. Okay. Um, here, I'll put them away. Or let's put well, them to the side. Put them to the side. Because okay. we might still need to reference them because okay. they're so relevant. <laughs> okay. But yeah, the thing is, I brought up Rhinebeck now. So now I'm thinking about my, my, my whip. Okay, well, show us your whip. I know without my whip. <laughs> this is, I, I jumped on this train so fast. Mm -hmm. This is the Instant Crush by Hohi Locatelli. This is mohair color work held double. I was so much more intimidated before I started, but actually knitting it is just pure pleasure. It I love knitting color work anyway, and it's not more difficult with the two strands of each color. Um, mohair itself is so sticky that the strands really want to stay together and how I did it was I did when I was caking the yarn I have a good I don't really have a great example here we are when I was caking the yarn I did make sure to keep hold of that inner strand I don't usually knit from the inside of the ball because I find that it makes a big tangled mess at the end um because it collapses collapses in yeah. on itself especially with mohair you can end up losing like the last 10 grams of your yarn but um, when I'm also using the outer strand, that kind of handles itself a yeah, little bit better. That makes sense. You, you don't have a big sort of cage at the end. So um, that makes it, the yarn management a lot easier. If you have the wherewithal to wind cakes like this, um, do you try to keep track of, this, of the thread in the middle and it becomes a lot easier. And so I'm just working through this absolutely you know, one more row, one more row, one more row, one more well, row type also, chart. So, so motivating to see it appear. I know you were inspired by um, a few projects as well. So if you're looking for color inspiration for this, mm. there are some beautiful finished projects already yes. that are worth looking at. And you even ripped and changed colors, which is dedication. I, you ripped well, there. I mean, I don't, let me tell you about the second time I ripped. <laughs> um, the first time I had used a pink, actually chiffon pink, basically like this. But in mohair, you see, I told you it would help. Yeah. Um, and it just wasn't the right pink for the, the mix. Um, I'm really happy with the colors I ended up choosing, which are Arctic Blue, Oxford Blue, Lichen, and Honey Mustard. Again, all on our own Bontrico Bliss. 
base, um, which is a standard lace weight mohair, but there are so many out there. We have more here as well. It would be beautiful and knitting for all of us. Yeah, we have, we are your mohair one-stop <laughs> shop. Like whatever it is you're dreaming of, we probably can help you yes. with that. So, it looks fantastic. Like the, the your yeah. stitching is really even and beautiful. I'm and also that you're not, you don't see it through. That was kind of one of my things. I was wondering if you would yeah. really see it. I can see it a little bit, but it Slightly. kind of becomes part of the design. It does. For example, at the beginning, you've got that high contrast, the blues. You can see some slight shading behind, but it's consistent enough in the stripe. I'm not catching my floats because I did catch my floats a bit and then it showed through. So but only to, to the extent that your... I was bothered by it. I don't think anyone else would have noticed, but you know, you're so up close and personal with your knitting while you're doing mm -hmm. it, that things like that did stand out to me. Um, so as soon as I cast this on, I saw another combination that I'm like, why didn't I do that? But I do genuinely love this. Um, but I think the other option, if we end up doing kits, I'm also gonna do this as a kit because how beautiful and autumnal would this be? Oh, that is really pretty. What would you do as the main, as like where the light blue is? I guess there was maybe a main so much with this. Not so much. You do need to use more of the blue. I needed two skeins of the blue and one skein of each of the other colors. Um, I do like the sort of two contrast and two contrast. So yeah. light and dark blue and then kind of like a yellowy, light pale yellowy green and a darker golden yellow. Um, so maybe I'll do rosewood as the main. Ooh, that'd be pretty. And this is the pop with instead 70s. of inverting. So rosewood where arctic blue is. And then brick yeah. striping on top. And then for these stripes in lichen, I would do honey mustard, like flip that. And where honey mm -hmm. mustard is, I do the darkest color, dark olive. I think that's what I would do. Yeah, that's really pretty. So this oh. is brick, rosewood, dark olive, honey mustard. If you're feeling the more autumnal vibes. I know I certainly am. It can't come quickly enough. So I don't, I don't have a Rhinebeck project yet. And like that's, I don't have a lot of time. I I think I'm going to try a vest. That's always great. That's a, seasonally really uh, probably a good choice. Yeah, last year was so hot. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of wondering if maybe a sweater vest is a smart thing and then I can mm. put a coat over top of it if I if I need. And Yeah, am I going to wear double mohair color work? Yes, you will. I mean, to... you might not for very long, but you will. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll give, it a, I'll give it my best shot. Well, I can't wait to see it. Once it, when oh, you get to sleep, I just catch the floats. That's why you can see it a little bit. I stopped ah, catching okay. the floats because I didn't, I could see the yellow through the blue and I stopped. Uh, so I decided to put on the Grid Love sweater because we have a fresh restock of Noro Curion to talk about. And this is a design of mine and one of our store samples that uses the Noro Curion, I think, in a really effective way. That's a nice pile. Isn't it cute? You can't, yeah. ah, but two of the best ones are at the bottom. Oh, wow. Okay, I'll rejig it. Yeah. We have 13 new colors of Noro, which is why I'm so excited about it, because it's always so much fun to get new shades of the Curion, because there's so much variety in each skein. There's always some fun new project and color to discover with this yarn. Yeah, it's one of my favorites. I come back to it over and over. In fact, I'll show you in a second an older yes. pattern of mine uh, that also uses Noro Curion. It's impossible to really tell how they all go, although fantastically they do supply these like lovely little, little strip. strips of what it's knitted with. So when you see it online, you'll see the little strip beside the picture of the, the yarn, but you don't always, the long color changes, so you don't always know exactly what you're getting, which is part of the beauty and the fun about it. Well, and also I've learned to trust Norosan. Yeah. Like the, the design that goes into this, it's, it's smart. Often like in the ball, I'm like, oh, I don't know about that brown. And then when mm -hmm. you're knitting with it, if you didn't have it, it would not feel balanced. Mm -hmm. um, it's, they're, they're very well designed colorways. So I'll just, um, I'll do my little pitch for yeah. this sweater. I am wearing, this is I think the size five or six. Sorry, I took off the little thing. It is size six. So that is not my, the size I would knit for myself. Although I might go to a four. Like I like mm -hmm. that it's got some ease. Um, but one of the things I was trying to do with this design, besides just have fun with like a really geometric sort of almost um, like circuits mm -hmm. uh, for the yoke, is this is uh, really, really size inclusive in that there's also like uh, waist shaping options of straight waist, um, an hourglass shape and an inverted triangle. So um, a lot of men prefer that, uh, especially if they're like, they work out and they've got the nice little waist, that's how they like to wear them, <laughs> to show it off. Um, so, you know, uh, that's in there, but also tall sizing. So this is knit for not tall sizing. So you can see the sleeves hit uh, in the appropriate place. Um, 
but if I was knitting, say for my husband who's six foot three, I'm gonna choose the sleeve length that's the tall sizing. Um, so yeah, I feel like it's uh, something that is unisex truly, and it's written to be that way. And uh, we use the Hao Nui as the main. This is a gorgeous, basically it's limited so edition yarn. It was so difficult to even get the stock of it in the first place. I don't know if they're going to continue producing it. If they are, we aren't going to really be able to continue getting it. We do still have sweater quantities available. And if you are interested in trying different breeds, um, rustic yarns, surprisingly soft rustic oh, yarns, really, I would really say don't miss out on this one. I'm, I knit a big sort of house coat style cardigan with it, with the same color because it's called Dunedin, because that reminds me of the Dunedine and I'm a, man of the west at heart <laughs> um so that's why i chose this color but it's also just a really gorgeous warm creamy warm. pale beige and so it's specifically from um a haonui flock in new zealand um and these non meals cheap are raised ethically with the affection and passion of the gardener family so it's like farm to skein um fleece gently harvested while leaving a layer of protection behind and it's spun in japan so it this is a hefty 200 gram ball um so you've got 400 meters that's 440 yards 447 yards roughly uh, per ball so it'll really go a long way if you end up with leftovers you'll have pretty meaningful leftovers you know yeah. like i broke into a third ball for a sweater just and then i had enough for hats and all sorts and actually yeah. i think I it's even used some, some of the leftovers, leftovers from that one. So this one was uh, at size six. This was three of the Haonui and two of the Noro uh, Curion. The other thing that's kind of cool about this, you don't have to use the same color Curion. Oh, like, right. You could take these two Ooh. and fade right through. So I think That'd it's super fun. fun. And then the other pattern, so this is a free pattern of ours on mm -hmm. Ravelry. This is also a free pattern, but this is a Stephanie Earp free pattern from the before times. <laughs> um, and this is called the Hex Pillow. So this is done uh, using making little modular uh, hexagons. You can see the center here is one of them, um, where you can just take two of anything and you just, it's every two rows you change. And it's really fun if you've got like oddments of Curion laying around, or you really like to just play with all the colors and just see what happens, because you kind of can't go wrong. Absolutely. So you just, um, you sew them around and then you leave one opening, stuff it, and then sew it up. But I'm a, I'm a big Curion fan. So I, I like, I'm sure this is not the last that yeah, Curion has seen of me as a designer. It. One of the first things I ever knit was uh, with Curion. And um, yeah, I was really impressed by it. It was a hat. My dad still has it. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah. and if you, if you used it a long time ago and found it a little rough, I will say I do find a marked difference in the texture. It's quite mm. a bit softer than it once was. Okay. Uh, and, and I don't have any problem with it like next to my skin. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. Okay, that's that. And then the other yarn that we love that we've restocked is the Nordic Yarn Eco Cashmere. Now we have this in the fingering weight. It's just so luxurious and the kind of projects you're going to be making with this in fingering weight result in just ultimate luxury. Like it really just feels like, whoa, I was capable of making that. Um, it is just a yarn that feels next level professional in that true yeah. luxurious quality cashmere way. Yeah, I think it like it reminds me of the like fine cashmere you get at the department store, like those sweaters that like moms have. Yes, I say as a mom like, who doesn't have one, but not like they do them today. No, the this old is school like the kind. old school cashmere because cashmere production changed somehow, and now what you find in I mean even supermarkets in the UK, and it's just it's flimsy and it's extremely soft because it's overly brushed, and that means it's going to pill instantly. And this kind of you might be surprised that it doesn't feel quite as soft as those like the brush the, the, the sad pilly sweaters and winners yeah it's not as soft as those because it hasn't been overly processed and brushed and as a result it is lasts longer it lasts longer it'll just get better with time and you have stitch definition because yes. if it was like that you wouldn't see any of your stitch True. work uh, so this is 50 percent recycled cashmere and 50 percent virgin cashmere um and that is how also it ends up being really quite a great entry-level price point for cashmere it's for cashmere for let's cashmere. be clear. it's it's yes. a pricey yarn i mean we've talked about this before that people come into the store asking for cashmere mm -hmm. and then when they see the price tag they are not as keen on the cashmere so we were really motivated to find something yeah. that wouldn't have that sticker shock and we feel yeah. like this is it and uh, so at 50 grams 
it's thirty four ninety five for a fifty gram skein. It's which is two hundred and forty six yards for yeah. so for a fingering weight that's five hundred and ninety two yards in 100 meters but it's a true fingering weight it's not a light fingering or lace so really that yardage for the for the price and for the 100 percent cashmere there's so much you can do with it and yeah. it turns out really beautifully it has a lovely little yeah, texture just, to it know, it's gorgeous yeah. and so one of our free patterns that we use this yarn is the belle fee hat so named for belle fee means um daughter-in-law in in french and uh oh we have a little little end oh yeah sorry it's from the top Maybe we might have, you might have had pom pom. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this is very much sort of what uh, many people come in in October, November, and say, "I want to knit a hat for my daughter-in-law," and a gray cabled cashmere hat usually hits the spot. So we unfortunately were not able to get this light gray color back in stock. It was uh, back ordered at our supplier, but it's just one skein of any one of the colors. So if you're ordering this for this you can ask us to throw in the pattern but also it is free you can download it but we're happy to print it and send it as well mm -hmm. can i try it on yeah it's got a really great level of slouch you know yeah and the cashmere just helps it well get, yeah it, exactly it's like made for that kind of look yeah. and i feel like it's such a cl i went i really want to make a real classic mm -hmm. you know something that you would come oh, back to so year after year trend proof yeah yeah so we have a new yarn um Again, a tricky quest for the yarn store owner is finding that really good, well-priced, natural feeling, soft, easy care, chunky yarn. Yeah, I feel like we've been through a few options mm -hmm. and then we'll, have, we'll be like, oh, this is great. And then we can't ever get it again or they're always <laughs> out of stock or there's Let's no colors. A little. Always. Okay. Bye. Um, so we are giving this a go. We definitely love this brand. This is the Queensland Collection Falkland Chunky. So this is um, a 100% merino, yeah? Is it yes, merino? Easy Care Fine Merino Wool, harvested yeah. from sheep ethically raised in the Falkland Islands. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really round and bouncy and plump. I ha we've knit swatches with the test skein and they came out like that really classic gauge of they say uh, 12 to 15 stitches on the ball band for right. knitting, and I think that's about right. 5.5 to 8 millimeter, a US 9 to 11, and then uh, crochet as well. I really like that when they give the crochet gauge differently because it is different. 8 to 11 stitches in crochet. So it's really hitting that heavier, heavier than Aaron, but not so much bulky like that in between. Yeah, true chunky. Yeah. Um, and what we like too is that this is a great palette. Like if they're knitting, mm -hmm. uh, especially your gift knitting, I feel like you'll find here are the, you know, the really nice palette of neutrals with true black, which is always nice to have. Yeah, this really beautiful. This hits the spot for me for beige, you know? Yeah. And I like the gray too. It's got a little yeah. bit of a melange and there's element. Another, there's another gray that's really like that varsity sweatshirt vibe. Cool. And then there's all these super fun brights. Yeah, so, and which is, you know, really key because often this is a yarn that people are looking for to do uh, knitting for kids. Mm -hmm. So it's really great to have these kinds of bright shades. All of those are like a themed scarves, for example, character scarves, yeah, character hats exactly. around Halloween. There's always someone who wants, I need this superhero hat. I need that kind of cape or whatever. Yeah. And this is exactly where you want to go for those really fun, bright. Yeah, yeah so we're really glad to have this in stock. And you had the brilliant idea of potentially Yes. getting some make it tweed in on here. this is the here. sort of thing that make it tweed is really good with. Slightly thicker, um, already nice and soft on its own. Really um, like the heft of this yarn, like Snuff Nug, which we really love using make it tweed with. It kind of will stand up to the tweed. It won't be an overwhelming effect. Yeah. It'll really just look it's subtle, intentional. And like it was designed that way all the way from the beginning as a yarn, that yeah. sort of thing. And even on the neutrals, I think that this would be a oh, fantastic yeah. way to just elevate you imagine that as like a hat and towel duo like what a great gift that would be yeah it's beautiful um, i would say i think that might change the machine washability which i think we mentioned with make it tweed in our frequently asked questions last time um there's no reason you can't wash this it does say you can but when it's with another yarn they may behave a little bit differently just be like maybe wash, wash, wash. wash also new just released the uh line of magazine number 18 and uh, we just have a few copies of this. Like, this is a big one. People mm -hmm. are really into yeah. it. Yeah, they just do so well with the, I mean, they do well with all of them, but the autumn winter collections are just so cozy and so fantastic at evoking that mood. This theme was like a weekend away at the cabin and like, yeah. my goodness, it's perfect. Yeah. So one of the things we noticed right away is that there are two patterns in here that call for 
uh, let no be, including the one on the cover, which is why I have this piece of paper. So this is the whole dress sweater. And we actually have the same colors as the model is wearing in the cropped version. It's this really adorable, simple raglan, light stitch sweater, really effective, simple color work. So that is a rough sea color and the cream, white, uh, white color. Yeah. So the numbers are in the project page and it's the same. Um, and then we also have the other one in it is... Oh, Hume from Jenna Costa, yeah. uh, the knitted Kalilila. Exactly. This is the Himeli sweater. And this is a classic yoke, beautiful and graphic. It reminds me of stained glass windows or like the, not even, this, it, it's more like the, um, the grouting on the windows. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, yeah like the little the the, the glaze, I guess. Yeah. So this is um, in the lime green. Uh, we do not uh, have the beige. Lime grass. Oh, lime grass, sorry. Lime grass. L I M E, not L I M E. Um, and we don't have that particular beige in stock, but the white would work just as well. And you know, we've got lots of colors. That I you love can look this into. styling. She's got her fuzzy slippers and her cute skirt. Really fun. So, and then there are a few other patterns. In this book at that 14 to 16 gauge that we really like for Lopi, including the Turtle Dove cardigan by Melissa Quillo, that I think would be fantastic in Let Lopi as well for kind of shaking it up texture wise. Yeah, and I know yeah. that Melissa specifically mentioned Snefnug was another yarn that she oh, yes. thinks would be really good for the Turtle Dove cardigan, so we have lots of that as well. But I think Lopi would be a really Let me find fun this choice. So you all know what I'm talking about. Give you some visual support. Did you do all so many beautiful things? Uh -huh. There are two versions. I love how they did the, the contrast between the two. Here it is in a gorgeous coral pink. And what a beautiful scene in dark green. So there are a couple of colors in Snap Mug that would do really well. Yeah. On both those sides of the palette, like a somber neutral like, a, like a pop, pop of, of color yeah. and just like you know lying around lounging around the house on a weekend morning and like your that gorgeous cool neon light. pink uh, yeah. lounge cardigan so luxurious so yeah yeah we love this issue and we're excited that we've got some really great yarns that we can yeah. recommend for the pattern so if there's something you're looking at let us know and we will help you find your yarn Excellent. and then a very small little something new which is that You've uh, probably heard us talk about the Camp Fiber Stitch Stoppers before, um, but Laura at Camp Fiber let us know that she wasn't going to be stocking them anymore. So we were like, well, we got to find a replacement. So we have our own little make and mend brand where we've brought in these great little silicone stitch stoppers. Why don't you keep talking about them and I'll go behind the camera and show them a little closer. Okay, sounds good. They are. So um, we use these to keep our stitches on our needles and we, we package these up is we cook four of them in a little tin for you so that you can have them on more than one project. And then also this little tin is actually useful as packaging. You can use it for your stitch markers and other little notions. And we have them in some pretty bright sort of rainbowy colors. We named them uh, for the most part after our own yarns. So <laughs> this is the Concord grape color. So kind of like if you're knitting Concord grape and you were knitting this and you had the- I had the, the red one like as well. I put on some this, yes. the red maraschino and between color. the Chiaogu cable, and, and those stitch stoppers and the yarn, I was just very, uh, very, very monotone, <laughs> monochrome, Monoc monochromatic. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So you will find these on our website. Um, you can look under make and mend or stitch stoppers and try these. We do still have some of the camp fiber ones, which come in sets of two. Mm -hmm. And they have some cool prints that we don't have. Like yeah, yeah. Leopard That's print and stuff and like that. Too. We do love them. Um, and we're just relieved that we could find something to replace them. Yeah, and they're good for, it really depends on the brand of needle because some are more blunt or more sharp than others. Um, generally, we're really familiar with Xiaogu because it's what we stock and like knitting with ourselves and they will fit, they're quite pointy, so they'll fit um, about a two and a half, they're nice and grippy, up to at least six. Yeah, I mean, I definitely was using yeah. it on my 5.5s recently right. and that was not a problem at all. Um, and one last yarn for you, which I remembered, it's not new, it's a restock, but it feels like it's new because the first time we had it, it actually left surprisingly quickly. We were blown away by the response. Yeah, I don't think we even had time to really tell anyone about it yeah. and then it was gone. So uh, this is Feisty Fibers, the Pure Canadian. It's a bulky 
Sarah Erin. Yeah, Aaron, um, but at the same time, I mean, it's worsted on the label, 240 yards and 113 grams. So that's a pretty classic worsted weight yardage, except it's so bouncy and round and plump and Canadian fibers, I find, I, I don't know what it is about the, the sheep, but I've knit and dyed them a lot before and you want to give them room to Yeah, that's to what breathe. it is. It's like it's going to bloom yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, bloom. So I think uh, if you are trying to just give that swash a swatch, a wash, <laughs> yes, to make sure you're happy with how it comes out. But for example, um, Layla knit a ranunculus in, in this color, right? And that color, and hers was at 12 stitches. Yeah. And it was beautiful and it really gave the fibers room to soften up. It, it It's already surprisingly soft in the skein for mm -hmm. a Canadian wool. 100% um, grown and spun in Ontario and that's where Karen dyes it too. So super local to us and we love that. And um, yeah, we've been looking at patterns for it around about that 12 to 16 gauge. I think 16 would give you basically like the warmest, most impenetrable hats and mittens. Yeah. Um, like 14 is yeah. where I'd be interested in the sweater maybe. Yeah, and certainly it would be so good for cables. Like really oh, yeah, yeah. fantastic definition. Uh, we were looking at a few Kathea Coleman patterns that we might want to knit up in this. We haven't committed yet to a store sample, but we still wanted to share it because it comes across so well in its incredibly bright palette, which is a challenge yeah. in this type of yarn. Yeah, it's really impressive work by Karen. So I love, I do, I love her logo yeah. because if, if you've met, if you've ever met Karen and you may have met her at Canadian yarn shows, these are her glasses. And like, <laughs> when I see this, I think of her and she's so present in this work <laughs> and in a really wonderful way. And so this is the gorgeous creamy natural shade to give you an idea of where all these colors come from and how transformative this intense dyeing is. Um, yeah, I'm so impressed by how she achieves these colors. colors yeah yeah so yeah that's about all we have to say about it other than we really do love it and we will have more to talk with you about this in a future episode as we get knitting with yeah it. absolutely yes. but we do still have some really great quantities for sweaters accessories uh shawls all that sort of thing uh blankets oh, that'd be nice. uh, available now so what else has been on your mind lately well i um <laughs> I guess I wanted to, I, I'm sure some of you may have noticed if you follow us closely that um, I don't know, over the summer and early spring, we hadn't been releasing as many free patterns as we usually do. So this was obviously a great episode where we talked about we have our new hat, we have the new mittens, we have the new cowl, and um, that's sort of a return to form for us. Well, I don't know if uh, we don't want to set the bar too high for releasing three patterns. Maybe not three on the same day. <laughs> Four in a month, but. <laughs> um, but I just, you know, at this point, what I can say on the subject is if you've been one thinking to yourself, hmm, that's unlike them, uh, you're onto something. We have been working behind the scenes. Our, we have not, not been designing. We have not, <laughs> not been writing patterns. Um, but we have been working on a longer term project that very soon I think we're going to be able to get a little bit more specific about and, and we're really excited to do that. But just wanted to say thank you guys for um, giving us a little space to do that <laughs> and um, really uh, excited to be publishing stuff again, but yeah. also to tell you more very soon. Very soon. Stay tuned. So lastly, we have some really exciting news to tell you a bit more about because we posted again over on Instagram and in our newsletter, we've mentioned this. Um, already we were incredibly excited and kind of just like blown honored. away honored to be invited uh, to join in on a knitters retreat cruise in Europe in uh in in August 2025 yeah so a ways off ways off they asked are you available we're like I, I guess so. we'll make sure <laughs> so I have a visual aid while we chat about this so joining the cruise the Grocery Girls, Jodie and Tracy, and Patty Lyons, and the Cabin Boy Knits, Jamie and Christopher, are going to be hosting this cruise, running from Amsterdam to Basel, down the Rhine, um, in the summer of 2025. So it's just the entire boat is knitters. It's not like a group of people on a cruise. I keep looking at, <laughs> at Steph, even though you can't see her. No, how we're just going to show up and have an amazing but time. But we just, we found pictures of the boat and it looks incredible. Yeah. Like really like beautiful, luxurious. Um, the single rooms sold out really quickly when ticket sales opened on Monday. Um, but 
uh, there so, is still, yeah, find a friend. Yeah, find a friend. It's also far enough away that, you know, take a look in the comments of the of all of us posting about this. The other yarn stores involved are Rosehaven Yarns here in Canada, in Ontario, and um, the Scheme Sisters in Australia. So it's really a worldwide effort. And so we've all been posting about it. If you are super interested, but you don't really know if you want to share with a stranger, maybe check out the comments and maybe you'll find a friend who, who's also interested, going, yeah. you know, like, um, you know, make new friends. Yeah, I used to do that when I was young and single, go to Club Med <laughs> and just be like, okay, somebody else come too. Yeah. Um, but basically our role is to tell you guys about it. Uh, and then once we're on the, on the cruise itself, uh, we will be sort of social. Mm -hmm. Hanging out, knitting, chatting with people, yep. sitting at tables with people, eating dinner. We'll be um, helping with setup for events and doing some emceeing. But really, these guys are the stars of the show. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, it's there are a number of stops down the river, so you get to like explore all the towns uh, through uh, the Rhine journey from Amsterdam and to Basel, which is in Switzerland. So you go through Germany, and um, there are like knitting excursions and visits, um, and I think the grocery girls are going to do a podcast, like a live, like podcast. A live podcast, and um, there's going to be dinner entertainment, and the packages include everything, like um, wine and drinks and food, and wine, and... <laughs> <laughs> Yarn isn't included. Though. Yarn is not included, it's BYOY. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I don't think, and the plane tickets aren't included, you have That's to get right. there yourself. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it's going to be a fun time. Yeah, we're really, really excited. Obviously, we've got to like temper that a little bit because it's a long I way know, away. It's a long way away. Uh, but yeah, it's it's the kind of thing I think that we dreamed about a little bit when we. It's an incredible opportunity. It's yeah, we wanted privilege. to travel together and travel yeah. for work and all and of that and go see the yarns the of the place. world yeah. and yeah, knitters of the world. So we really hope we can meet some friendly faces there. We'd love it if you joined us. If you choose to, if you decide to, and, and there is a spot for you, there is the first required question you have to answer where you heard about it. If you put SFAST Trico, that would really help us as well. Well, we've packed a lot in this episode. We hope you've enjoyed it. We really hope you would like to try Jolly because we are really feeling strongly that this is like, I guess I didn't really speak in all the excitement how much of like a pinnacle this feels like to me, this incredible privilege of being able to develop a yarn completely from scratch and it really feels like both of us have bought the best of what we know about knitting to create the kind of yarn that we really love to knit with and share and well it's just you know, inspiring us you might have noticed our taste is kind of different <laughs> <laughs> so when we both really love something and we are able to find something that answers both of our deepest desires of what we want from knitting what we want from yarn what we want to make with that yarn we know we are on to something and this really is it like mm -hmm. we both love this yarn so much and when yeah it's something i dreamed of when we were first talking about taking over the store it's something i dreamed of when i was studying knitwear design in scotland it's something i dreamed of when i was learning to spin and i know yarn design has been on your mind actually for a while. i would say like i never even dreamed of it i don't think i knew enough to know it was something you could dream about so it was really like meeting you <laughs> that made that i was like you mean we can do that that's amazing let's do it <laughs> but yeah you but you got really into like the intricacies of yeah. it and the technical specs and like different kinds of balances and getting that perfect tone and not, not not too strong a mall but still noticeable yeah. all of this stuff played into the no testing. it was amazing but i, I feel yeah. like in a way like i just woke up one day and you're like hey we can do this i was like whoa this is <laughs> this is cool um which is also really neat to just sort of discover that there's this whole part of the industry that i never even thought about mm. how yarns are developed and why they're spun the way they are and why this fiber is chosen that's like a really new part of this industry for me so it was really exciting to do this with you well it's been a it's it's been a ride and it's come to fruition and now <laughs> yeah. we just uh, I can't stop knitting with it and I can't stop talking about it but I will because yeah. we've reached the end yes I hope you try Jolly I hope you love it I uh, hope you found some inspiration and enjoyment here and thank you so much for watching we'll see you soon